Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. We're Pastors George and Terry Pearsons, and we are here today with a distinguished group of people. Just a few of our closest friends. Yes, we are here at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Praise God for the time that we have together here. Oh my goodness, this is great. This is so good. So I just really... <laughs> Are you over the top? I was a little yeah. over the top. Yeah. I walked into the room this morning. It looks so good. I and know. Everybody looks so nice. And yep. It just, I've told them I felt smarter just walking in the room. <laughs> so, and you can apply to Kenneth Copeland Bible College, and you can look nice, and you can be smarter too. <laughs> You could be in this very room. And you can just go to kcm.org. Um, no, kcbiblecollege.org. We have so many .orgs around here. <laughs> KC Bible College, and you can get more information about how you can come be a student here at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. How many love being a KCBC student? Woo! Wonderful. We have a great time in the Word here. We'll maybe be able to share a few testimonies as we go through this week, but we'd love to have you come be a part with us because it will radically alter your yeah. the, the power of God at work in your life. Amen. Do I get a witness in the room today? Okay. Well, first all of right. all, we want to thank Kenneth and Gloria Copeland Always. for allowing us to do these broadcasts. We appreciate them very, very much, don't we? Don't worry. What an honor to be able to do this. So thank you, Kenneth and Gloria. And tell them also about Canada, what we're doing with Canada. Well, Canada, we have KCBC in Canada. You can get information there on your screen where you can find out exactly how to be a part of Kenneth Copeland Bible College on the, with the Canadian campus. And they're watching in live right now. And it's just a wonderful treat. It feels so, feels, just feels so good having, knowing that we've got people. That's right. Yeah, we're working it from the top of the world. We're working our way to the bottom and, and all the way and around, all the, way around the, middle. the middle. Yeah, we are. There you go. Well, Terry, let's pray over this time together and okay. we'll get started okay. in the word. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for what you're doing in the world. Thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us together to be able to teach these valuable, valuable principles that have changed our lives and changed so many lives. We thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. You ready? Go for it. You want to go first? No, you go first. You go first. You go. <laughs> okay, I'll go. You got it. We want to talk to you today about core values. You know, we've been in ministry a long time, but it's not about core values for ministry. This is about core values for our Christian life. Core values, the things that will give us direction and, and help us stay steady. So let's jump right in. So maybe you've heard about core values before. How many have heard that phrase before? A lot of you, most of you, uh, some of you may not have heard of that. It's very popular in the business world. We started hearing about core values years and right. years and years ago. Right. Pastor George and I both have made a study of business and leadership over all these decades of being in ministry. But I found something in a Forbes magazine recently, and I want to read to you just a few quotes from that magazine, or you go ahead and you read them. Yeah, and I'll, I'll read them, you comment. Okay. This first one, core values are the principles that a business aims to operate by. So if a business needs to have core values to operate by, shouldn't believers have principles and values to operate by? Yeah. And shouldn't they be clear? Uh, they should also be the mindset that guides all relationships. Okay, so if they can identify a core value for relationships, and then it, certainly we can. And if we have core values that will help guide us in our relationships and how we relate to each other, this is going to improve our families, our church, and frankly, society in yeah. general. Yeah. Core values should also serve as a compass and filter to navigate through any decision-making process. So that decision-making so process, when, you know, when you talk about it, it seems like it's just a casual thing, making decisions and the process. But in this world that we live in, where the world is absolutely full of such terrible and decay, making decisions, there can be a lot of pressure. 
pressure to go the world's way, pressure to think the world's way. You can get caught up in that even when yep. you don't even realize it. But having core values will give you the guidelines you need to keep those principles in line. I'll add this here, that many years ago, Jerry Savelle went to preach for a particular denomination. Uh, it was overseas and it was founded a number of years ago and he actually preached from one of their founder's messages. And so after he preached, they, the leadership came to him and said, Brother Savelle, that was tremendous. That was awesome what you just preached. Where did you get that? And he said, from your founder. And that was really, that's an indictment. Uh, people forget. And that's easy. why it's so important to hold on to the core values because if you don't, those are going to slip from you and you lose sight of what you've been called to in the first place. I really believe that these core values that we're sharing with you today are not core values just for Kenneth Copeland Ministries or EMIC, but these are core values would that all Christians understood them and you'll see that as we go through uh, and held on to them especially the first, the first several ones, okay? Okay, this next one. Using core values as guidelines ensures that every interaction, decision, and move is made, that is made, has a purpose. It results in greater clarity and integrity. So if we have the same core values, if we're all operating in the same core values in a family, or if we're operating in the same core values as a church, or even think about it broadly as the body of Christ, what happens? We have a culture. We have a culture of these right. core values. Right. Relationships, husband and wife, friendships. If you're working out of the same set of core values, even when you have different perspective, different viewpoints, different callings, it, it, there's a culture in which uh, you can operate and function that creates uni uh, unity and, and harmony. Okay, so now we can see that these core values are valuable. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Did we go too fast? Did yeah. you get that? Yep. Okay, but now let's define exactly what is a core value. I've alluded to it already, but first of all, what does core mean? A core is the central part of something. You could say it's the, the heart, like the, the core of an apple, the core of a watermelon, the core of a tree. And it's where the seeds are for reproduction. Okay, so that life is reproduced out of that core. It's central. A core means central to its existence or central to its character. And it means that which is of greatest importance. What's at the core of it? Or we might say, what's at the heart of yeah, it? Yeah, the heart. Yeah, absolutely. The core is the heart, the very center of it. And then the core value, what is value? Well, a value is one's principles or standards of behavior or one's judgment of what is important in life. I like that. What's important in life? That's the value that we carry. Yeah, value is a verb, value is a noun. So what, what do you really place value on? Well, you, may, you might know the right answer in your head, but when something is in your heart as a core of what you hold on to, it might not be something that you should be holding on to. There are mindsets, there are, and culture creates core values. It should be the other way around. Yeah. But a lot of times culture uh, reinforces values, uh, core thoughts and beliefs. And then the could be better things or worse things are perpetuated in that culture and reinforced until they can be so inherent, as we said, a core is yeah. so intrinsic in what's going on that, that it's hard to shake free. free. You may not even realize you are thinking that way. You think everybody thinks that way. When in reality, you're causing something in your life to take you down a road that um, re really isn't the will of God for you. Well, that's, the, Terry, I was thinking about this that you've heard our son Jeremy preach about this and talk about being raised in the household of faith. Well, that was a core value in our home. And he had that ever since he was born. So anytime there was any kind of attack of any kind, whether it's physical or financial or whatever, that core value rose up on the inside of him, the authority that he took mm -hmm. and that he operated in. You're cheating, that's two days from now. Really? Yeah. So train up a child Whoops. in the way he should go. That's okay, it's a sneak preview. <laughs> Train up a child in the way he should go, and he won't depart from it. Why is that? 
Well, because it's intrinsic, it's built in. So what, what makes these core values so powerful, so um, you, go, you go. Okay. <laughs> what makes them so powerful is that we believe them. You believe them. They become so much a part of your life that they are, they're almost automatic because they're so ingrained, they're so well rooted, grounded, established in these core values. And <clears throat> the core value, it's a popular term, uh, but they've been called core, we can call them core beliefs. What do we believe? As believers in Christ, what do we believe? And th that's probably a stronger word to use, is core beliefs. I've heard them called core beliefs before, but the popular term right now is core values. But believing comes from the heart. That's what makes it so powerful. Or we would say, you know, an interchangeable word would be coming out of your spirit. Belief comes out of the, the spirit man. Now we think of the spirit man in context of the Holy Spirit, and we think of it in terms of righteousness, but every person is a spirit. Every person yeah. is a spiritual being, whether they're born again or not. And so out of that heart, Jesus said, there a good man pulls good things out, an evil man pulls evil things out. And that's where the, the power that comes. Romans 10, 9 and said, 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with right. the heart, man believes. How powerful is that? That the whole recreation of your spirit man is instigated by believing something in your heart and releasing it or igniting it with your right. mouth. Right. Jesus said in Luke 6, 45, anything your heart is full of will come out of your mouth. You'll talk about it. You'll live it for better or for worse. I like what Gloria said one time, from the abundance of your heart, your mouth leaks. <laughs> so what, everything, everything, everything is yeah. filtered through our belief system. It's true. It's true. Uh, so let's talk about our core values. Well, let me, real quick, let me give you an example of a negative belief, okay? I think sometimes we learn more when we see a negative one, especially when they're so, so prevalent in society. When you assume a bias, when you assume there's a bias against you, okay? And everybody, everybody qualifies to have a bias against them. It could be your skin color, your economic status, your, your gender, your, your financial status, your education, part of town you grew up in, where your parents came from. Uh, all, all of those things, somebody will find a bias against that. But if you have that bias reiterated to you, and maybe you have an experience that's, that's very real, you know, there could be somebody that has bias against you. For sure. Yeah. And if you hang around long enough, the devil will be sure that that bias crosses your path. You can be sure of it. It's out there. It's the fallen world. But when you develop that as a core belief that all of this group is against me because I'm in that group, whatever that group may be, then you begin to filter everything through that. And you can see how you could miss the plan of God, miss the will of God, miss the love of God, miss opportunity. And that's when a root of bitterness comes out. And what does the Bible say? It defiles, it corrupts, it ruins. It can ruin everything in somebody's life. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see how that core belief, that core filter, when you start filtering everything through that assumption of bias, age, that's another one. And some of us qualify in several categories, okay? So that's a core belief or core, core yeah. filter, and it begins to be the basis for which you make all decisions. It can work for you, can work against you. So let's talk about what our core values are that we've relayed. This comes after decades of listening to Brother Copeland preach, studying the Word, and like I said, but, but these core values, when we first came, let's put these down on paper. What are they? I had to really yeah. think about it yeah. and see to it that we were analyzing and, and letting the Lord show us out of all the things we've seen and heard and we live our lives by, what can we identify as an actual core belief? Let's read through those. Stories. Okay, yeah, uh, and we're gonna read through these every day, but these are the core values. The first one, we put the Word of God first place. The second one, we live by faith. The third one, we walk in love. Fourth one, 
We're led by the Holy Spirit. The fifth one, we pray about everything. Number six, we protect the anointing. And number seven, we honor God. I like it that there are seven of them. When we first started teaching on this, we had five. And then we saw, well, we really need to break these two out. And then there were six and it just didn't seem right. I kept looking at it. Oh, wait a minute. We can see how there's a seven in here. And this really encompasses everything. Everything can fit in category number one. Put the word first. Right. Well, if you do that, right. then everything else is a byproduct. But you mm -hmm. need to break things down more than that and see then how to integrate that more into your life. So why do we need core values? We've kind of established that, but I think it's good to look at the days that we live in and, and the pressure that's around us. These are, these are the days like Noah. Think about that. You know, where the days are wicked, people are wicked, godless, um, no value on life, uh, just hating God, hating everything that's good. Now, certainly not everybody, but the ones that seems to have the biggest microphone are the ones that are imposing the greatest pressures on everybody else to be like them. You know, they call you intolerant, but they'll kill you because, because you're not, you know. There's something wrong with that picture. So all of these things are happening, but if we have our core values, if we are rooted in those core values, if, we, if we've right. got those not, not memorized, I'm not talking about memorizing them, that's a good thing. I'm not in, talking internalized. about that. But that's a good, ooh, that's a good word. Yes. Ooh. I'll give you extra credit <laughs> you. On, your, on your pop quiz later. Yeah. That's right, you internalize them. And you, you, you do that by reading, studying, hearing, we'll talk more about all that. Uh, but mostly by putting them into place, by acting on them. And when we do that, then we've got that, that strength that holds us steady in any storm. You know, I was thinking about that, Terry, about how I, this came to me was Romans 12. <clears throat> be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And to be renewing your mind, I know that when I met you at ORU, I had just come from Massachusetts. I came from a, a small church there. I'd gotten born again at 19, but, and, and my mind started to be renewed, but, but there was a change when I met you and you introduced me to your dad's teachings that I had a, there was a core value, if you will, or a core belief in me that God, God will make you sick for whatever reason or whatever purpose. I mean, ma many of us have grown up around those kinds of thoughts. But my mind had to be renewed to this, this word of God that said, by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Well, that, that is now, that's a core belief. That is deep down on the inside of me because I've had all these, all these many years around this for this to grow on the inside. And so there are some core beliefs that you really need to get rid of and you need to replace them with these. And so with core values, we, without core values rooted in God's word, we're ships without rudders, destined to be tossed back and forth, subject to every whim of evil. But with them, we have the tools we need to weather any storm and come out, come out better than ever before. So over the next two weeks, TV audience, uh, students, we're going to be going through these core values one, at a time. And while we'll be teaching some on those core values, really the point is to, to instill value for that core, for the core value, one, two, three, four. It's, it's to instill and to see the value of it. If you don't value it, then yeah. Easy come, easy go, easy to put it aside, easy to forget about it. Oh, I'll get to that later. But when you understand the value of it, and that value is so heightened that it becomes an, as, as essential to your life, knowing it, understanding it, living by it, is so essential to your life that everything else pales in comparison. I'd rather have this than anything else. So I have a testimony here from one of our KCBC students. We kind of asked around a little bit before we 
um, started these broadcasts, and this was one I thought this was great from from Gaina, from Gaina Malema, uh, Malema, I say it right, Melema, Melema. Oh, thank you very much, Gayla. You have to <laughs> correct me later exactly how to say your name. My spiritual growth has been exponentially accelerated by attending KCBC. Wow, exponentially accelerated. I know, that's a big that's word. A big yeah. That's like internal, internalized. Yes. <laughs> Pastor George was undoubtedly correct. See, it's in writing. Wow. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Did you want me to say that one again? Yes. Okay. Pastor George was undoubtedly correct. <laughs> <laughs> Through immersing myself completely in the Word of God, receiving anointed instruction, and believing in the process, I have experienced a transformation that has transformed my life. By keeping EMIC's core values in mind, cultivating a relationship with my Lord, speaking His words, I have undergone a profound change. Praise God. And I'm still learning. Praise is anybody God. Anybody else? Is that, is, is that anybody awesome. else's experience? Casey VC? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 This is a great place to be. You really have, coming to KCBC, you not only have the opportunity to be taught the Word, but you're, you are in the atmosphere of a living, breathing, actual ministry, church, television production. Um, all of the things necessary for ministry are right here, and they have a working, they can gain a working That's knowledge That's right, be hands-on. Uh, how many have noticed that, quote, higher education has really taken a big, a big slide in the last few years. Many in here already have a college degree, uh, already, or at least have had a couple of years of college. Can I see your hands? That's quite, oh, look at all of you. So, so you've already experienced- I've had a couple of years. Yeah, uh, you did. Yes, very good, honey. That's okay. why undoubtedly you were crazy. I just thought of that. Okay. So coming to KCBC is a great thing to do, really, these days, before you would go to any other college. And, and that would help get you straightened out. If you've already been to college, you could come here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And well, all of that money that they're sending to those colleges from overseas? Yeah, it's something to the tune of over $6 billion a year is coming I'm claiming wealth from, transfer, from, from, wealth transfer. KCBC, right here, right here, right here. Right here. Amen. send it Amen. here. All right, stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> I discovered my calling here at KCBC. Immerse yourself in a faith community here at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Get equipped with what you need for your next steps in life and ministry. Discover new gifts and talents and learn biblical education from seasoned instructors. Kenneth Copeland Bible College is here to help you find clarity of purpose in your life and ministry. Find your purpose, discover your calling. For more information, go to kcbiblecollege.org. There is so much more to being a believer than just going to heaven. What if you could live a life of intention, fulfill your God-given destiny, and see God's kingdom established here on earth? You can with Our Core Values, a book by Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Learn the seven core values that become the blueprint for the abundant life Jesus has for you. Your core beliefs are like a compass that guide every decision you make and create the culture of your life. That's why, as a ministry, KCM bases everything on these specific Bible-based core values. In fact, they're for every believer to live a life of victory. When you're rooted in values such as living by faith and walking in love, you aren't rocked by the chaos of the world. As you study the Bible, use this book and the special journal pages to take you deeper. Put God's Word first place and be a light in the darkness. Become a part of changing the culture around you through our core values. 
Request your copy of Our Core Values, the free book by Kenneth Copeland Ministries, also available as a digital download. Go to kcm.org slash core or call 800-600-7395. You can also scan the QR code. Core values are the values that guide your life and help you stay the course and hold steady in the storms of life. This offer is good for 60 days. Outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. We walk by faith when times are good. We walk by faith when times are terrible. No person that lives by faith has to change his or her lifestyle because of the times. You will bring honor to God when you increase in your fruitfulness. God has so much more in store for you than what you've already experienced. Join us for the Branson Victory Campaign with Kenneth Copeland and Jerry Seville, April 4th through the 6th. Register at kcm.org slash Branson today. The Branson Victory Campaign starts this Thursday, April 4th through the 6th at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. What an awesome meeting that is. And I'm telling you, partners, we have these meetings just for you. You need to come, hear the Word of God preached. Brother Copeland always has an amazing word to hear, as well as Jerry Savell. He's going to be preaching with him. And we've got a few surprises in this one that I won't let out just at this moment, but it's going to be a tremendous word from the Lord and an atmosphere of faith and an atmosphere of worship. And you know, that's how we learned so much about these core values we're talking to you about was right. being in those kind of meetings, being in them coming with our Bible and our notebook ready for notes. And speaking of notes, we want to help you as we have this, our free free product to offer to you right now is this, this little journal on our core values. And you go to kcm.org slash core, kcm.org slash core. And in this journal, you'll find the outlines from what we're teaching this week, information on each of these core values, but then also a lot of pages through there that you can where you can take notes, additional notes. But let me tell you something else we've done for you. Go to kcm.org slash uh, or a core, kcm.org slash core. And also we've set it up there where you can find out, uh, have other resources for each and every one of these core values and learn and study more, put great discounts on there. So you go to that website, it'll pop up kcm.org slash core. And you can find out more about faith, more about the word, more about the anointing. Uh, more about all these f core values and start digging in to change the core, your very core into the with the values that God has for you, okay? So until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. We want to remind you of this. God, God loves you. you. We, we love, love you. you. And Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. To learn more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith, check out our website for free content and resources available to you on kcm.org.